Welcome, my name is Konstantin Magnus and this is a tutorial on how to render a flower scene. It's like a macro photo from some grass and some flowers. Um, the first picture you see here is um, from a low angle with a really shallow focus, so most parts of the image are blurred while the center is sharp. You can see the scene better from top. This also shows a different color mood. This has been added in Photoshop of course. So you can basically tell that I duplicated the same flower all over the place, which is no problem if you look from a low angle. You can't really judge that. And I like the grass and the sun better if it's blurred than totally sharp. And apart from that, you can see that the scene has not really uh, optimized. There are some messy collisions um, that are only obvious if you look at it from top. Now, what do you think how much work such a scene is? Um, actually, it's quite simple. Let's have a look at the scene. So basically this is all we are going to start off with. That's the only thing you have to model. So that's six polygons. We should be able to do that with a polygon. Just position it like this and cut through it. and shape it in a way a petal would look like. This is just a technical explanation, so we're not going to uh, actually design this. Once you're happy with your shape, just call it petal. And um, we should talk about scale early on, because right now I modeled it in that size. It's 100 by 200 units, which is way too big. So let's scale it in, so that you have like five centimeters maximum, Pre press S to go closer. And now you can extrude it. I do that procedurally to get some sort of weirdness in there. With a cloth surface you get a not so regular extrusion. You can always use an um, ordinary extrusion if you like. And um, the L, press L, because the axis could be down here. And press L again. Next we put all this into an array. Set the array to zero. Now go out like this and use maybe five copies, depends on what you have drawn so far. Now to make this a bit more irregular, you can put it into a null and add a deformer called displacer to it. The displacer gets a noise, which you can define in size on a global scale, and the intensity can be regulated here. I want maybe 1.3 or so and now let's play with the shading.
so that looks a bit more irregular while I might have to change the axis a little and the rest well we can define ourselves I'm not really happy with the deformation here I want it to be smaller I guess yeah that's more like it and I set it back to intensity centered so it goes in both directions and now we are in the right scale so give it a reasonable size so it reminds you two flowers the geometry is really messed up now but later on a subdivision will help us to smooth it out okay uh, then the trick is to um, basically well, we don't need the subdivision right now, but call this, um, I, I'm not into flowers, so I just call it flower top. And um, we can instantiate this and scale those instances in. And move them a little, a little, maybe like this and copy paste another instance and make this smaller again if you like you can turn it a little but well so that be it for the flower and next step is the antennas or you can add any more detail inside the flower I just use a shape like this, a tiny little end side with six sides which goes 0.05 or well, let's do it 0.1 which will be swept. So here I can see that's way too thick so let's just use an end side of 005. In 3D with NA I can see it clearly it needs more detail in that direction it looks a bit like it's broken so let's make it smoother two degrees in the spline that was okay and by the way you can define this shape even further if you maybe let's give it some more room so I can play with it in the sweep there is the scale option among details and I can now make them get from thick to fine with control click in the curve you can define this even better all right and this needs to put be put into an array as well i can use five again and use zero as that value so that would be it if you're not happy with the overall looks of that then just take the whole thing and scale it in or play with the array radius so it doesn't look too regular maybe we make the end side smaller again all right so that be it if you need a little stem here then just do pretty much the same without an array another end side can be a bit thicker this time and use a sweep now if you see that this sweeps uh, have some issues in the shading then just increase the fong angle so it looks smooth again same goes for the stem 
click on the font tag and set it, make it just bigger and give it some more subdivisions. All right, now put all you've done so far into a group. Call this flower. And that's the whole modeling part. And I wouldn't even call it modeling because it's more a play with arrays than anything else. So how can you make this flower look more interesting? You just add three materials. I just copy paste it and um, it's the easiest thing for debugging if you just quickly give them different colors so the first one may be red second green and the third is blue and you will see that we have one slight problem here the inner gets green the middle one uh, gets green, sorry, the other red, and the outer one blue, and once you give that the blue color, then everything gets overwritten. While there may be some um, ways to go around this, I think the easiest method is just to give this a new instance um, and move the other the original away by 1000 units. So we basically have a copy another instance of that original. So that's blue now. Now we can use I um, we can remove the color first and activate a displacement channel for all three materials. Now that's the reason why we don't need any um, subdivision surface we can just use a little noise here, activate subpolygon displacement with maybe, yeah, should be four subdivisions, and round the geometry. So now if you use clever values that are not too big, you can create a noise here, and the noise scale is important as well. So I make it really small just for trying and render this out. It takes a while now and this is my first result. Now please play around with different noise values. You have all those noise types here. You can set the scale and make use of clipping as well. i just give you a quick example. If you are more interested in this topic then please, my, please watch my other tutorial on subpolygon shaders. We skip this part because technically everything is okay so far. The rest is artistic choices. Now, how do you set up a whole scene with that? You take your flower and... Well, first you can define a camera angle. That makes copy-pasting a bit more... Um, makes more sense that way. And drag this little orange icon and put it right on top of your flower because this is where your camera will have its focus and everything in front or behind this flower will be blurred just like in the preview image. So the next thing you can set is an f-stop but that only works if you go to render settings here and activate physical. Among physical you just say depth of field so that way um, you will have the effect I just described. You can also regulate the blurriness with using a lower f-stop. A lower f-stop gives more blur. So let's just um, try this. And you can see the effect already, which looks especially good because our flower has the right scale. It's just a few centimeters. So now we can see the camera um, angle and just copy paste more flowers with using instances and a render instance. Maybe we do that 
in the viewport. So let's just make this a bit flatter and um, hold down control to do more copies of this. Don't make it too regular. This again is some artistic choice. I'm not gonna talk about this and you can rotate stuff from top. Just click here and so outside of this gray circle and just draw it so it's not so obvious that we copy pasted it. Also moving those instances from top to lower works magic. So they don't look too regular. getting a bit clunky here. I don't really know why. It's not that much geometry we're using. Okay, that's about it. Let's see. Yep, looks interesting enough. I think the blur effect is way too strong, so reduce it to 5.6. And you can always change the focus because we want some foreground flowers as well. That's way more interesting. And change the focus just by dragging it to here. Next, we set up some landscape underneath the flowers. So just go to landscape, make it 40 centimeters by 4 by 40, so that's rather small. If you're having troubles like I do with the um, display, then just use some simple box. So I'll leave the camera, that's my camera, that's my floor, uh, the landscape, and we will place it underneath the flowers and scale it up. We don't need the borders to be at sea level, so that's much nicer. And let's dive inside the camera again and make sure we see the ground. Well, maybe that was a bit over the top, so wireframe should be okay. Now the last step will be adding grass. And in order to avoid collisions with our grass, we just um, view the whole thing from top. Excuse me, and move it slightly more towards the camera. And we just draw the areas where we want grass. So let's convert the landscape, go to point mode, and let's just draw where we think grass should appear. Try not to touch the flowers and really draw where the camera is going to see stuff. Go to 3D and you can add some more holding down shift of course it's more realistic to leave out some parts but um, again this is not an artistic tutorial so let's add grass now try it with hair add hair and I think you can tell if you make the grass shorter, let's use 5 centimeters that this worked out. And um, now it's all about defining the count. How many hairs are we going to use? We don't need that many guides. Well, we should use them all, but we can control how many are rendered here, I think. 
and the hair material is crucial as well. So what we need is some realistic colors. I don't use green grass now because I want a black and white um, image in the end. Not much specular and the thickness should really fit. We need a test rendering now. And this looks way too regular, so we should add firstly more hair again. And we really need in the materials some frizz. By the way, there's much nicer ways to distribute hair, so um, you can use vertex maps, for example, to make that more realistic and many other things. I just did it in a really rough manner just to show the workflow overall. So now let's increase the length and see a slightly different version. Okay, I'd rather go for this flower in terms of sharpness, so let's go here with the camera. And next step is lighting. So for lighting you can easy either use physical sky, which will look something like this. And you should basically make sure you mix up um, loads of colors. You basically have two colors, the orange or the warm color and the sky color. Just set the saturation up in both cases and render it again. You can also turn the light direction without changing daytime or anything, just rotate it. And once you like what you see, you should add global illumination, effects global illumination, Iridian's cache combined with light mapping 5 as a depth will do low settings preview and really low path count will result in fast renders. Maybe you like it that way. I think it looks quite nice. And the rest would be Photoshop once you rendered this out. Give it a proper size among output, a few thousand pixels, like 3000 by, I don't know, 2000. And then we go over to Photoshop. This is what my rendering initially initially looked like. So um, I did it rather grayish on purpose. I have blue color and warm color but not much contrast, so I can play with that in Photoshop. And that's what I did. First I made the whole image a bit brighter, especially in the already bright regions, to really have a sunny feeling. Then I changed the hue and saturation. We're especially looking at the red tones and the blue tones. 
so I made the colors more vivid then I copy pasted the bright parts and turned them orange and used soft light layer mode to increase that and I'm really kind of breaking the image with that in parts but I liked that from an artistic standpoint used a vignette and pushed the colors in the shadows. I wanted more blue and red to get this kind of purple. Midtones were more about green and the highlights were more yellow, of course. Same with the other image. First I made it brighter, I changed the hue here I really ripped the colors apart. You can see the transitions are almost breaking from yellow to blue. This time I used a colored vignette and I faked some sunlight which is simply a copy of my image but kind of distorted and that way it looks a bit like sun rays coming in from the side. Alright, now you should know how to do a scene like this. I hope you learned something from my tutorial and I'm gonna put the scene online so you can download it, um, at least the flower itself. I don't have the scene file anymore for this because I was just using the demo and goodbye.